my grandfather used to say to me when he was alive, the definition of a fisherman is a jerk at one end waiting for a jerk at the other end. <laughs> and that's what I'm doing. I'm sitting here and I'm waiting for a jerk on my line. <laughs> uh, I'm bait fishing with worms. And I'm just getting some fresh air. It's the middle of May. The river looks absolutely fantastic. But this time of year is a tough time of year to catch fish in the river. So I haven't got very high expectations. But I'm here. I've got the fresh air. The cocky's above. The mozzies are a bit frustrating, but I'll give it my best shot. And if I don't catch a fish, well, that doesn't matter. I've changed location where I was. I wasn't getting a bite, so I thought I'll try somewhere else. Same rigs, two rods, baited with worms. My milk crate. I like the milk crate because I can carry my stuff in it. On this rod, I've got a Pat Noster rig. You'll see the Pat Noster rig is the sinker at the bottom with a loop coming off the line which I've tied into the line a hook on the end of the loop and a bunch of worms What that does, it sits on the bottom and it just keeps the bait up off the bottom enough for the fish to see and it also, if there's a bit of current, it'll, it'll wash it'll wash the bait up a bit like that and keep it moving a bit and if you're using a yabby or a shrimp or something, the Pat Noster rig keeps the yabby off the bottom and stops it from tunnelling into the mud which they can do. So that's the Pat Noster rig. Anybody that's followed me in my uh, magazine articles has probably heard me talk about the, the Pat Noster rig. But that's what it is. It's the sinker tied to the bottom with any sort of knot. Whatever it takes to hold it on there. Tie a loop in the line, loop the end of the loop through the hole and over the top of the uh, hook and there it is. And away we go. that one's in ready to go. This is my second rod. What I've done with this one, I've got a running sinker. You can see the sinker runs all the way down to that little twig that I've got in the line, a little stick. Might look a bit unprofessional, mightn't have all the bells and whistles, but it's basic and effective. On the end of it, I'm using a knotless hook. The knotless hook is a hook that you, it's got a little ball on the back, and you wrap the line around a certain way, quite easy and it's on there. And the reason I'm using the knotless hook is because that little bit of line that I've got at the end of the sinker there if I want to change hook sizes I can unwrap it and take it off and then wrap a new one back on without actually cutting the line. And I can also attach a second hook up here if I want to, a second knotless hook. So I've got a Pat Noster rig on that rod and a running sinker rig on this rod. I like to have two different things in the water. If I'm trawling with lures I like two different colours. Just in case one's working better than the other. If I find I'm getting a lot of bites on the running sinker, well I might uh, give the Pat Noster rig the flick and go back to a running sinker with both rods, or vice versa. So I put this in then I'll go and sit on my fat bum on the luxury chair over there. <laughs> Have a look at that. That is a freshwater blackfish. A northern blackfish. Slightly different to the ones we get down in Gippsland. Slightly different, but largely different in size. These things don't grow a whole lot bigger than this one. Oh, I struck and I, I struck and I missed. So I put the rod back down. But then realised I didn't actually miss it because it was so small. But look at that, if you can see it. A beautiful little native fish. I'll just put him back and I'll tell you a couple of things about these blackfish. The blackfish. People think that they're rare. They're not rare. They are actually very prolific in a lot of these waterways. 
It's just that it's rare to catch them because we don't target them. They're tiny little matey fish and they only grow about that long. And therefore, they are cod fodder. The cod eat them. The redfin eat them. The trout eat them. The yellow belly eat them. They are predated on by just about every, every other fish species. So as a result, over the years they have evolved to know to live very close to the snag and they will be hundreds of them along these banks, under these snags, under these logs and they rarely come out during the day, they'll come out when it's dark, under the cover of darkness. The research has shown that during the night they will travel around quite a bit. A surprise catch. 50 pound braid. I don't think he was likely to break the line anytime soon. <laughs> but you never know, he had his wheat fix this morning he might get going. <laughs>